Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. It's your boy, it's Harold Elam Jr., the internet guy, and this is another inspirational Sunday morning. Good morning to you, 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 and you. Super excited about what God is doing, man. Always seeking out God first. We have to live and operate inside of Matthew 6, and 34. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Take no need for tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of itself. Good morning. Hallelujah. This is another inspirational Sunday morning. Man, listen, I'm just super excited. What a wonderful week God has given us. It was a challenging week, but challenges are good for you. Hurdles are good for you. Obstacles are good for you. It helps to grow you. It helps to give you that endurance and that tenacity you need to keep going. Sometimes, see, there are, there are sayings where people say failure is not an option. Well, failure is an option because failure is not the opposite of success. Failure is the opposite of conformity. So, and, and so when we operate and, 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 and we fail, we may have placed ourselves in an area of conformity. So I tell people the opposite of success is not failure, but conformity. And so failure, what it does is it grows you. It gives you character. It gives you strength. It gives you an opportunity to fix and get better at what's not working properly in your life. Gives it a, a better chance for you to reflect, reflect back. Okay, Lord, I didn't do this right. How can I be better? Okay, Lord, I didn't say that right. How can I be better? See, Inspirational Sunday Morning is designed for me, you, her, them, and us so we can reflect back. It's the first day of the week. Don't let the, the, the calendar or the man or the world fool you. Sunday is the first day of the week. So inspirational Sunday morning for us as a community investment club, as a private membership association, investment group partners. It is that time of the week that we prepare ourselves, hallelujah, for the Monday, for the Tuesday, for the Wednesday, for the Thursday, for the Friday and for the Saturday. It is our preparation period so that we can be better. So even though it was a challenging week, even though it was a week of some failures, even though it was a week of hurdles, controversy. Hallelujah. God said, we still made it through. You woke up this morning. There's your victory. <laughs> you woke up in your right mind. You woke up with a roof over your head. You woke up with food in the refrigerator, car in the driveway. Hallelujah. So your family's doing well. Hallelujah. So even if it was a week of controversy, even though of circumstances, situations, negative Nancy's, Dalton Thomas's today, is a new day. This is why I told you when we first started, you got to look first in Matthew 6, and 34. That's got to be your scripture. That's got to be your living, operating in, uh, characteristic trait in. This is what you have to disclose to the world. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. And then you have to ask, what things? I don't worry about certain things anymore because I've given them unto God. Don't worry about where I'm going to live. Don't worry about what I'm going to eat. Don't worry about what I'm going to wear, what I'm going to say, because I've given it to God. Matthew 6, and 34. Learn it, read it, understand it, implement it. My name is Harold Elam Jr. I'm the apostle of Investment Group Partners. We're the parent association over Community Investment Club. We oversee a plethora of communities, but one of our most successful communities is Community Investment Club. It's an online community set up for retail investors, a place where you can learn how to be better stewards, better stewards of God's time, God's word, and God's money. We teach, we preach, we elevate, we encourage, we show you how to establish, manage, and maintain the framework of your family's financial future. Inspiration Sunday is no different. We, we do our best as God wakes us up to do a podcast every single day. We, uh, we, uh, we name the, or give the day's themes and it's just a way of inspiring, encouraging. Um, they're not biblically based. Hallelujah. They're just names of the week that we've given them. We have inspirational Sunday morning, motivational Monday together. We got this Tuesday. Why not Wednesday theology Thursday and super Saturday. Um, those are just things that we implement to help give some inspiration, some enthusiasm, 
and excitement to the podcast. These video podcasts are designed directly for our members, but also to encourage those that are non-members to join us. Join the Christian financial wellness movement. Join us as we learn together, earn together, grow together. We are an investment community. We have 16 different clubs in which we invest at together. These clubs are called investment vehicles. They're known as neighborhood managed group portfolios. Each of these vehicles, with the exception of three, are 3C1s. A 3C1 is recognized by the Security Exchange Commission as a community investment club. As long as we maintain the rules and regulations pertaining to the club, we don't have we have less restrictions. We're not obligated to the uh, Investment Act of 1940. We're not an investment company because we have no more than 100 benefacting members. Each of our clubs can be utilized as an investment vehicle for members. Members have a minimum and a maximum contribution they can do to the clubs. The clubs then invest in the stock market as a group. So it's group portfolio club investing. That's the process. But the name of our clubs are neighborhood managed group portfolios. 16 of them. 16 of them are out there. Uh, seven are available, nine are already at capacity. Because of the different guidelines, rules, and regulations set aside for community investment clubs, that means that once our clubs reach 100 members, they're at capacity. So you can't get in until we have what they call open enrollment. Open enrollment comes every quarter for us. It comes January, February, March, quarter one, uh, April, May, June, quarter two, July, August, September, quarter three. Currently, we're still in the midst of quarter three. We're closing everything out uh, tomorrow. By tomorrow, hallelujah, which is Veterans Day. I'm excited about Veterans Day because of the projects that we have that are related to veterans. So we're super excited. So four quarters in a year, you get an update. So if you want to become an active investing member, you would invest in one of the 16 neighborhood managed group portfolios. Of the 16 that are available, uh, seven are open right now for new members or for current active investing members who are not in those clubs. Those, those particular clubs can be found on our website. I'm going to put that down there. Let me find that. Uh, it's the um, uh, the IGP. Hold on a second. It's a new website. It only been up for like uh, well since the gathering. So let's say six months. So I'm I'm so used to being on social media. I should remember everything, but I copy and paste, and I have a senior moment. Hallelujah. So we're going to utilize today, guys. We're going to be going over today's word, uh, today's rhema word. Before I do this, before I start posting, let me give you today's rhema word. God just reminded me there are different kinds of gifts, diversity in use. Today's rhema word. There are different kinds of gifts. Diversity in use. Spiritual gifts, I'm going to give you first the uh, introduction. Spiritual gifts are special abilities, talents, or capacities given to individual Christians by the Holy Spirit for the purpose of serving God and others within the Christian community. These gifts are not natural talents or skills, but supernatural endowments provided by God's grace. They are meant to be used to build up the body of Christ, which is the community of believers. We are part of a community of believers. We are the body of Christ, but we represent a different uh, a course or a different office of the body of Christ. For instance, there are, the Bible says in Ephesians, we're going to go to Ephesians. I'm going to break down the office. We're going to be talking about gifts. We're going to be talking about um, understanding because there is an ecclesiastical order in everything we do. People always say, well, you preach prosperity. No, I don't. I, I teach generational wealth. That's not what God has called me for. I'm not a prosperity preacher. I'm going to give you the difference. And then I'm going to go to the lesson. We're going to Ephesians just so you guys know. Um, and let me find out exactly where we're going. Then I'm going to tell you the difference between prosperity and generational wealth, um, because prosperity is almost like having an ink pen and owning us an office supply store. Um, so we're going to go to Ephesians four and 11, four and 11. That's where we're going to start at. But we're going to start at Ephesians four, one through 11. Just go to Ephesians four and then I'll give you different scriptures. But listen, I'm not a, I don't preach prosperity. What I do is teach you how to fish. My job as an apostle of investment group partners and inside the body of Christ is to teach you how to bait and hook, teach you how to cast out a line, teach you how to clean the fish after you catch it, how to get the fish off of it, how to reserve and maintain the fish. My job is to teach you so you can feed your family for a lifetime. Generational wealth is a lot different. Prosperity preachers, and I'm not putting anybody down, that's their thing, that's what they do. They teach, they teach prosperity and they're the ones prospering. 
Because if they really wanted to teach generational wealth, you would be doing what they're doing. You would have what they have. That's what God is all about. It's duplicating our efforts one into another. So whatever I'm doing, I want to teach you how to do. And I want to teach it every day, all day, without fail, no exceptions. I don't want anyone to be confused on what prosperity is. Because a lot of times we'll post our videos online on all social media platforms because I want to enlighten people and teach them what scripture says. I'm not telling you to give me something, buy something from me. I'm not telling you to download any videos, go to Amazon and buy no book. No, I'm telling you to hear what God is saying. When you come to our lessons, if you've never been here before, my job is to teach you how to establish, manage, and maintain the framework of your family's financial future. Today we're going to be talking about there are different kinds of gifts and we're going to go into the offices and the callings um, so you understand because inside the body of Christ, investment group partners, we represent that body of Christ like the Philippian church is going to teach you how to get to the end result expectation pertaining to generational wealth, how to break the curse of poverty in your house. How to break the curse of poverty in your house. Generations of poverty. We, we sometimes travel through generations of poverty. We wake up poor. We go to sleep poor. We, and it's not poor just in monetary. It's poor in our thinking. And so God begins to open up a door to key individuals that hear him. Not everybody's going to hear the message on generational wealth. Not everybody's going to take heed and follow the roadmap that God has given us. We started in Proverbs 13, 22. If you're new, go to 13, 22, read it with me. Then we're going back to Ephesians one, Proverbs 13, 22. That's where we're going to start. At. It reads a good person leaves an inheritance for their children's children and the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the just. And what God is telling us here is that, hey, there are some things I've already put in place for you. But in order for you to achieve those things that I put in place for you, I need you to get in place. I need you to be understand the instructions. I need you to follow the roadmap. And so what I began to ask God through prayer, through meditation, how what's the roadmap? What 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 is what is the revealed word, this powerful word of God that you've given us? What is that revealed word and how do I get to that end result expectation of the wealth that's stored up for us? That was the question. How do I get there? And so if you read from the NIV version, I don't know what type of version you have in the, in the Bible, um, but it says a good person leaves an inheritance for their children's children. But a sinner's wealth is stored up for the righteous. And even when we look at that. In Proverbs 13, 22, I'll see it. Was there any commentary from the, from the author? We still need to be in a position of purpose as individuals. And you need to first find Christ. If you're not saved, we'll stop right now and you can give your life to Christ. We can go to Romans and I want to uh, enlighten you and tell you how God has blessed me. All I can tell you is what God has been doing for me. This is an everyday, all day, without fail, no exceptions type of job. I ain't just saved on Sunday. I have to do this all day. It's a lifestyle. It's something that we become. It's not things that we do. James said faith without works is dead. But I'm telling you, without the faith, you will not perform the work because it won't make sense to you. Without faith, you won't forgive somebody. Without faith, you won't be able to, to, uh, to walk in a room of people that don't like you. Without faith, you won't be able to give to the ones that are unworthy in your mind. Without faith. Anyway, um, for those of you that may not be saved, y'all better talk to me. Glory be unto your name. You can send up a heart. You can send up some love. Um, we are preachers. I'm a preacher by heart. I'm a, I've become an apostle over a period of time. Glory be unto your name, God. You can call me Harold. You can call me Dr. Elam. You can call me Junior. It doesn't really matter because it doesn't matter. It ain't about me. It's about the work that God has called me to do and what he has formed me to be. It's same with you, what he has formed me to be. So if you go to Romans 10, 9, this is for those that may not have given their life to Christ. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. It is, it, it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. And as scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Holy. So that gives you Romans 10, 9 through, what did I read? 9 through 13. 
So write that down. So if you already saved, filled with the Holy Spirit, share that scripture with other people and say, hey, you can give your life to Christ. Here's how I started. Maybe that's not how you started, but here's a good scripture to give them so they can get started. So now let's go back. Ephesians 4 and 1. If you're just now joining us, my name is Harold Elam Jr., the Internet Guy. We're talking about different, there are different kinds of gifts, uh, diversity in use. And I started reading uh, the introduction of, of the lesson. The lesson says spiritual gifts are special abilities talents or uh, capacities given to individual Christians by the Holy Spirit for the purpose of serving God and others within the Christian community. These gifts are not natural talents or skills, but supernatural endowments provided by God's grace. They are meant to be used to build up the body of Christ, which is the community of believers. Then I said, let's go to Ephesians 4, and I wanted to start at 11 because there's different offices. People say, well, what you do. I teach you how to establish, manage, and maintain the framework of your family's financial future. Investment Group Partners, which I am the CEO and co-founder of, is, is like the modern day Philippian church. Our job is to make certain that we keep aggressively moving in a direction so the body of Christ can survive. In this land, it takes monetary value. This is why God tells us, I want you to be in a different position so you can make changes. I want you to be in a different position so you can uh, advance the, the kingdom. I want you to be in a different Different position so you can grow Christians. And so there are different offices that God give us. There are different uh, gifts that God give us. That's why the name of the, the title of the lesson, there are the different kinds of gifts, but we're still in our series. This is the third day of our series. Get in where you fit in. Let's get in where you fit in. But the title of today's lesson of get in where you fit in, there are different kinds of gifts, diversity in use. And we use the word diversity in our investment classes when we're teaching you about the verbiage and how to navigate through the stock market. We chose the stock market as the vehicle we're going to use in order to advance the kingdom, in order to get a return on the monetary values that God has blessed us with. But it's not all about the monetary. First, we got to change your thinking. First, we got to put you in a position of purpose. First, we got to make sure you love and know Christ. So God can see you, he can use you, and we got to give you a birthday. Once you give your life to Christ, your whole thing, everything changes and you get your birthday gifts. So we're going to go to Ephesians 4 and 1. I'm going to read 4 and 11 first. So Christ himself, and we're talking about Christ. Christ himself gave some, gave, gave the apostles Christ himself. I'm reading from the NIV version. So it says Christ himself, Ephesians 4, 11, write that down. Ephesians 4, 11, write that down. Uh, so Christ himself, somebody post that for me, Ephesians, E-P-H-E-S-I-A-N-S, 411. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers. Why did he give them? There's your fivefold ministry. There's your equipment as leaders. See, there's no big eyes and little U's. It's just a calling on your life and who you are. So to equip his people for works of service. So he gave us apostles. He gave us prophets. He gave us evangelists. He gave us pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. So there's something we're supposed to be doing here on earth. We're building a government here on earth through the Christian community. And in order to do that, God has to have an ecclesiastical order. And this order comes in the, and not in the title of what they are, but in the gift that they've been given. But in the gift that they have been given. So those that are apostles, they normally have the gift of governing. Remember the day's title lesson, there are different kinds of gifts, diversity in use. So normally a person that has the gift of an apostle will have the gift of governing, running something, starting something, establishing something. Then there he gave the prophets, the ones that can see the foresights. Now, remember, it's a gift. It's who they are. Don't necessarily have to go back in time and do what they did. But it's who you are, which means God shows you foresight. God gives you ability to see something in the end, in the end result based on what I'm about to do, meaning God. Here, and let me tell you what I'm about to do because I need you to go warn these people. Let me tell you what I'm about to do so I need you to go talk to that brother. Let me tell you what I'm about to do so I need you to say this because maybe God chose not to talk to that individual so the way he talks to that individual is through the prophet. The way he talks to that community is through the prophet. Not everybody is going to be called to be a prophet, but everybody can have the ability to prophesy. 
I want y'all to understand that. Then he gave some to be evangelists. Evangelist John the Baptist, one of the most famous evangelists out there. He was calling you to the kingdom of God because Christ was on his way. Well, we can evangelize under the authority of being an evangelist. Guys, if you're just now joining us, we're talking about there are different kinds of gifts, diversity and use. And so when God's calling on the different type of gifts, I'm first giving you leadership gifts, gifts that that are that are over communities, over people, over other leaders. So we're in Ephesians 4, 11. So Christ himself gave gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and the teachers. Verse 12 to do what? Why did he give us these gifts? Why did he give us these offices? Why did he give us these leaders to equip his people? Verse 12 for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and the knowledge of the son and become mature, attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. So there's some stuff we got to do. That's that position of purpose. As individuals, you have to come first knowing what your gifts are. You got to be in your position of purpose so God can tell you what your gifts are. So then, you know, okay, wait a minute, my gifts are with my hands. And then you become the gift because God's going to begin to mold you. You be, you become operational in the gift. You become organizational in the gift. You become motivated because of the gift. And you start implementing those things into your family, into your community, into the local church, because that's who you are or that's what you're becoming. Let me give you some more. All right. So Acts 1.8. This is where we believe um, if modern day theologians that they all started. Here's here's where God opened up the gifts from Christ, because it says and I'm going to read some more about gifts right now. If you're just now joining us, we're in Ephesians 4, 11 and 12 and 13. That's what we read. I'm reading to you now. Acts 1, 8. But you will receive power and ability when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses to tell people more about me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria, even to the ends of the earth. So here's the, the introduction of Christ telling his disciples, this is what's about to happen. The Holy Spirit's going to come upon you. And as I read forward through these gifts, you're going to understand that these gifts are not operational without the Holy Spirit. Because this is not us. We're the vessel being utilized in the gift, not a robot, but we're a vessel because of our loyalty, because of our position to Christ, our loyalty to Christ, our love for Christ. I need to use Harold. I need to use Perry. I need to use Isaiah. I need to use Camille. So God will use you based on the gifts that he gave you when you gave your life to Christ, not your talents, not your education. Watch this. I'm going to go back to the beginning. Spiritual gifts are special abilities. I can heal the sick talents or capacities given to the individual Christians by the Holy Spirit. Acts 1 8. But you will receive power and ability when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. It ain't me. It's the Holy Spirit using me. I can cast out demons. It ain't me. It's the Holy Spirit using me. Spiritual gifts are special abilities, talents and capabilities given to individual Christians by the Holy Spirit for the purpose of serving God and others within the Christian community. It ain't by happenstance. You know, is that the way you pronounce it? That God put us together. This is not this is Romans 8, 28. It, it, it is a reason why God put Lanise in my life. There's a reason why God put Mike uh, Lepre on this video. There's a reason why and I'm looking at names. Isaiah Elam is on here. There's a reason why Ray Mims is on here. This is not by happenstance. Here's God opening up a door of opportunity so we all can get an understanding of what it is we're supposed to be doing. I'm there. I'm in my position of purpose. 
I didn't get there overnight. It started in 1995 and there was a journey as God began to mold me. Then God began to grow me. And the more that he trusted me, the more he blessed me, the more he blessed me, the more he required of me. And the Bible speaks to that. It says the, to much is given, much is required. So now God has given us a goal and he said, hey, I want you to raise up a community of believers so we can start looking, acting and re responding like the people in the Bible. We can start looking and acting like the people we're supposed to be. God says that we're supposed to have be faith walkers. I walk by faith and not by sight. But yet and still, there are many of us that claim Christ are doing the direct opposite. Doesn't make us bad people. It means that we're doing something in error or we're not fully connected or engulfed inside of Christ. You can't be fully engulfed in your job and expect Christ to do it. It ain't your job that's blessing you. That's a that's a means to an end. He places us in a position of purpose so we can be that light on our job. So we can be that 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 salt of the earth on our job. I can't put all of my strength and my ability in my education. He placed me in a position of purpose so I can be the light in the school while I was going to college. Y'all better talk to me. So you're the one to save. You're the one that need to spread the word. Every time God moves us into a different position of purpose, your gifts are supposed to reign in that area. Spiritual gifts or special abilities. Hear me. Got good people. Um, Talents or c capacities given to individual Christians, that's you, 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 and you, by the Holy Spirit for the purpose of serving God and others within the Christian community. These gifts are not natural talents or skills. These gifts are not natural talents or skills, but supernatural endowments provided by God's grace. Acts 1.8, but you will receive power. And ability when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Some of y'all don't have the power because you don't have the Holy Spirit. Don't fret. Get in your position of purpose. Ephesians 4, 11, 1 and 2. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works and service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the son of God and become mature, attaining a whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Wow. So there there are leaders within the body that are supposed to show you what to do. So you're connected to me so I can show you what to do I'm in the area of finance. I ain't your pastor. I ain't the mother of the church. I ain't the deacon. No, my job as the apostle over over investment group partners is to show you because you're connected to this vision. What you're supposed to be doing in the body of Christ, confirm you, help grow you and then, then promote you to the front of the line so we can keep moving the body of Christ. Let me tell you, Acts. I'm going to read Acts 1.8 and I'm going to continue. If you're just now joining us, today's lesson, I need you to write it down or write it in the notes. There are different kinds of gifts, diversity in use. Get in where you fit in. We're edifying the church. We told you last week we're starting to get in where you fit in series. Thursday night call, get in where you fit in. Friday night, 730 drop, get in where you fit in. Each of the titles are going to be different, but this is a series because I need you to grow up. I need you to mature. I need you to get into your position of purpose because this thing is bigger than us. We are preparing for the coming of a kingdom, but because many of us are in poverty minded positions, we don't know how to serve in a monarchy. A monarchy means there's a king, there's a queen. And there's a royal family. Y'all better talk to me. But we don't know how to serve in that. So God is raising us up. This is when he addressed us directly. And he said, this is what he said. When he addressed us directly, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Now watch our culture is coming up. Our culture is coming up. We're being repositioned into an area of purpose. 
And once we get into that air, that position, we have to know that the purpose outweighs the position. Stop moaning about the position because it's the purpose of why you're there. Stop moaning about the job. It's the purpose of why you're there. Stop work. Stop moaning about the church. There's a purpose of why you're there. Stop crying about the husband and the wife. There's a purpose of why you're there. But you have to learn how to operate regardless of the circumstances, situations, doubting Thomas is negative. Nancy's you got to learn how to operate in your position of purpose. So the gifts will show you how to do that. Hey, let me give you another one. Listen. All right. So we're in the lesson, guys. We're in the lesson. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. There is a great diversity in the body of Christ. There are many parts in the role, but they all come together in unity through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I don't know all the gifts. I don't. I can only tell you what the Bible reveals to me. You may know something I don't know, but I do know this. God places us together for a reason. He just said that there's a great diversity in the body of Christ. We represent the body and we use the anatomy of, of a man to explain that everything in the body is needed. So when we come together, we're forming this body and the body is called Christ. That is the real church. There's a physical local building that you go to for worship, for training, for establishment. But once you've reached that area of your life of maturity, God says, let me take you to the next level. So now you're at that next level. That's why you're connected to us. That's why we're connected together because I got to bless you. You can't leave me till I bless you and I can't leave you to you bless me. There's a blessing going on. It doesn't matter about the big eyes and the little U's. My gift is the apostle. So I'm operating in the apostolic order of the church. All I can do is what an apostle does. If your job is to be an evangelist, all you're supposed to be doing is what an evangelist does. In the midst of doing your gift, Operating in your gift, being who you are, you may prophesy and, and you may show hospitality. You may be hospitable. So I'm going to go over the individual gifts. Everybody said, well, I ain't no apostle. Don't worry about it. I ain't no pastor. Don't worry about it. I ain't no teacher. Don't worry about it. God said we all get gifts. Every believer that receives the Holy Spirit get at least one. <laughs> Hallelujah. Get at least one. So watch this. All right. So. There is a great diversity in the body of Christ. There are many parts in, a, in, in role, but they all come together in unity through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is telling us what to do, guiding us in the right direction, connecting us together. Then from there, watch that God never contradicts himself as he gives each member of his body. Remember, we're a body of Christ. Together, we're forming a body. You could be the eyes, prophet, seer. You could be the brain. You could be the mouth, you know, evangelist. You could be the hands, carpenter. You could be the arms. We're forming the body of Christ. And inside of this particular body, we're talking about generational wealth. I can't do it on my own. We're talking about getting to the end result expectations of what God would have for us as individuals. Everybody ain't coming. Everybody ain't coming. He, all right, hallelujah. He gives each member of his body commands. So when everyone is faithfully submitted to his will, did you hear me? His will. When we're, when we're faithfully committed together to his will, we are all working towards the same goal to glorify him and lead others to salvation. We're supposed to be the example. They're supposed to know that God's kid, God's children are wealthy. They're supposed to know that God's kids are 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 forever positive. We're we're optimists. In in spite of my circumstances, God gonna fix it. In spite of my situation, God got me. In spite of my health, my conditions, I know that God can protect me. You gotta stand like the Hebrew boys did when they were coming up against Nebuchadnezzar, even if he don't. I know that he can. That's the kind of reality you have to live in. Even if he don't, I know that he can. God is looking for that faith in that position of purpose. You cannot step out of that position of purpose. I'm a, I'm a wife. Then maintain your position of purpose as a wife and do what a wife's supposed to do. Stop trying to be the husband. You ain't a man. And to the man, stop trying to be what your wife does. Stop trying to be what she does. Let her be her. Let you be you. Here's what God has called us to do. I can't focus on the pastor. I'm not the pastor. Y'all don't want to talk to me. I don't even possess the gift of pastoring. Y'all, y'all, y'all see, y'all ain't hear me. I don't. The, it, the Bible says he gave some. Not everybody going to have the same gifts. All right, let, let me go into the individual gifts because some people say they feel left out in the spirit. Hallelujah. All right, 1 Corinthians 12. 
4 through 6. Write that down. 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 6. And I'm going to break down the gifts. Um, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit distributes them. I want to give you the resource of where they come from. There are different kinds of gifts. Somebody say diversity. Write it down. Diversity. But the same spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. So if I'm an evangelist, I'm serving the Lord by calling people to Christ. If I'm a prophet, I'm, 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 I'm serving the Lord um, by, by speaking his word to the people, giving them warnings and blessings and, and things. If I'm a, if I have the gift of, of a hospitality, I'm being hospitable. I'm serving God through being nice to people in spite of how they treat me. So. First Corinthians 12, four through six. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Here's God utilizing all the different gifts, bringing them together to form his body. Speaking to me as an individual, Harold, here's what I need you to do. Speaking to you as an individual, here, here's what I need you to do. And speaking to you as an individual, here's what I need you to do. What happens is because we're so caught up in the world, we're focusing on everybody else instead of focusing on my position of purpose, my family and building it up based on what I'm supposed to be doing. If I'm the father, then let me be the father. Let me be the daddy. Let me grow my kids. If, if, if I'm the if I'm the mother, then let me be the mother. No, not me personally, the mother. If you're the mother, then be the mother. If you're the pastor, then be the pastor. Don't be the deacon. Don't be the girl in the choir. Don't be like showing up in the videos. Do what God has called you to do. Spiritual gifts are something every believer is given when they receive the gift of salvation. Just as the gift of salvation is by grace through faith, so are the spiritual gifts. Our God is so generous. He constantly given, he's constantly given us things. These gifts are a manifestation of God's grace and divine empowerment. The, that's God's grace. He bless you with a gift of hospitality, but you ain't even nice. You ain't even using the gift. You ain't hospitable to nobody. He bless you with the gift to sing of song and your psalmist. He knows if you would open your mouth and sing, you would bless people. But you don't even want to sing because these are manifestations of his grace to you. Listen, they are bestowed upon us. What are they? The gifts that they are bestowed upon us as believers, as a result of our faith in Jesus Christ and our connection to the body of believers. Without you, my gifts are null and void. They may stay there, but I can't use them without you. I need you so I can show you my gifts. You need me so you can show me your gifts. Because whatever I don't do, you're supposed to do. Whatever she's not doing, you're supposed to be doing. It's a it's a win-win situation because it's the body of Christ. Currently, I'm sitting. I'm going to use the anatomy of a man, and I'm using my hands. I can stop to choose. I can stop and choose not to use my hands. And that's the brain telling the hand because this is in control. That's why we got to change this first. Romans 12 and 2. We're still talking. If you're just now joining us, my name is Harold Dillon Jr., the Internet Guy. This is another inspirational Sunday morning. Today's rhema word is there are different kinds of gifts diversity in use. Get in where you fit in. This is part of our series. We're on day three. Day three of our series, get in where you fit in. Today, we're talking about the different kinds of gifts. We've given you scriptures out of Acts 1.8. We've given you scriptures, 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 6. Now, I'm going to give you, um, and I, I didn't put the scripture down, but this is scripture. This is 1 Corinthians. First, I want to go, hold on, hold on, hold on. Mm, glory be unto your name, God. We were going to go somewhere. And I lost my chain of thought. But here's what we're going to do. Go to 1 Corinthians 12. I want to start there. Uh, we're going to go 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7. And I didn't write that inside the thing. And I'm going to go back and update it. For 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7, we're going to read down. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7. Go there, go there, go there, go there. Because some of y'all say, well, I'm not the apostle, I'm not the evangelist, I'm not the prophet, I'm not the pastor, I'm not the teacher. Doesn't exclude you from the gifts. So I'm going to break down the gifts because there's a diversity of gifts. 
And it's used for edifying the church. How do we grow? How do we move forward? How do we bless others? How do we establish God's kingdom when he comes back? We are government. Y'all don't want to talk to me. Ain't no voting. This ain't like the election. We are the elected, but this ain't no election. This is you being you after God has told you who you are. Stop mimicking people and become who you are. Watch this. Uh, first Corinthians 12, verse seven. Now to each one, the manifestation of the spirit is given for common good. To one, there is given through the spirit. We're talking about the Holy Spirit, a message of wisdom. So some of y'all have the gift of wisdom. Why would the body of Christ need you? Think about that. To another, a message of knowledge. Wait a minute. So somebody got the gift of wisdom. Somebody got the gift of knowledge. Watch this. A person that has the gift of wisdom means they have something that they know that nobody else can solve. God has blessed them in a, an endowment, a manifestation of wisdom. And so we're looking for that gift. Is it you? Is it you? Is it her? Is it them? Is it them? We need the gift of wisdom. Then it says there's the one that has the gift of knowledge, which means you know things. Doesn't necessarily make you a prophet. Means that I know things because what? There's a manifestation from the grace of God that gives you this endowment. Let, let me let me go back so you guys understand. All right. So I don't want nobody to be confused. Spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts. Follow me, good people, because some of y'all got the gift of knowledge. Some of y'all got the gift of wisdom. Watch this. Our special abilities, talents or capacities given to individual Christians by the Holy Spirit for the purpose of serving God. You have this knowledge to serve God. You have this wisdom to serve God. These gifts are not natural talents. This ain't something you naturally had or skills, but supernatural endowments provided by God's grace. Because of the grace of God, you have wisdom. Because of the grace of God, you have knowledge. And you got that after you got saved. Now, something is learned knowledge, right? Learn behavior. I did what my father did. Learn behavior. I did what the teacher told me to. Learn behavior. I do what other black men do. Learn behavior. God wants to break the learned behavior. He wants to break the conformity. I told you in the beginning, the opposite of success is not, is not failure. It's conformity. We're conformed to the world. We're conformed to doing things. We're watching what they do in church and we start playing church. We watch what they say in church. So we start mimicking their sayings. We ain't learning. We ain't knowing. We ain't growing because you're not walking in your calling. You're not walking in your gift. Now, to each one of the manifestation of the spirit is given to the common good. To one, there's given through the spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same spirit. To another, faith. What? Faith is a gift? What? So some people have supernatural faith because it says that it's the purpose of serving God. How is it given? These gifts are not natural gifts. They're but supernatural endowments provided by God's grace. To another, the gift of healing. What? So, wait a minute. Um, you're not the pastor. You're not the apostle. You're not the evangelist. You're not the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the teacher. You're not the prophet. But you have the gift of healing. Hallelujah. You have the gift of wisdom. Hallelujah. You have the gift of knowledge. Hallelujah. These are the gifts that are operational inside the body of Christ. But until you get in your position of purpose, it's not revealed. I won't know because you're not walking right. So I can't see clearly. Neither can God see you without Christ. Neither can God see you without Christ. Some people are operating within the body of Christ, not being seen by the church and not understanding why. Because God don't see them. And if any true woman, man, person of God, they don't see you either. They only see the sin, even though I sin. Y'all better talk to me. You sin. But when you're walking in the grace of God, God will see you because why? The only way to God is through the son. That means I got to line up with Christ. I've got to learn to do what Christ do. And the Bible tells me in Philippians 4.13, watch this. I can do all things. Not some things, not a fraction of things. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Y'all better talk to me. <laughs> Inspirational Sunday morning is 914 
on, on the West Coast. Glory be unto your name is um, 1214 on the East Coast. If it's afternoon for you, good afternoon. Guys, listen, this is the inspirational Sunday morning. Uh, spiritual gifts are, are our abilities, talents and, and capacities given to individual Christians. Today's lesson, we're talking about a different kinds of gifts. The different kinds of gifts. Everybody knows Ephesians 4 and 1 and 4, 11. That's why I started there. But many of us don't go to 1 Corinthians and 7. Many of us don't realize that there's, there's a spirit, a message of wisdom. To know, somebody's given the message of knowledge. Someone's given the, um, the, the gift of faith. To another, the gift of healing. To another, miraculous powers. All of this is used for the body of Christ so that we can move the kingdom forward so we can grow, so we can reach that end result expectation without your gift, without you. We're at a standstill. So we need you to. We do need you. Every part of the body is needed. Hallelujah. Don't you feel excluded? Oh, my God. Stop. Stop. You you may very seldom use your pinky toe. It is one, sometimes some of the ugliest toes you ever want to see. But that pinky toe, without it, you can't walk straight. It knocks off your equilibrium. You, you, it is equilibrium. <laughs> Somebody better correct me. But you can't stand up straight. Isn't that something? That little toe, that got a little bitty uh, 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 toenail. And you try to make it look good. But without it. You can't stand straight. You won't walk right. Because you're incomplete. And so God wants to complete the body of Christ. So if you're the pinky toe this morning, I need you. So we can walk right. Y'all don't want to talk to me. Let's go on with the gifts. I must go back to verse 7. I'm in 1 Corinthians 12, and I'm reading 7 through 9, 7 through 10. And I'm going to read it in its entirety, but I want you to hear the gifts. I'm reading from the NIV version, then I'm going to read it again from the Amplified version. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. Spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and still to another the interpretation of tongues. All of these are the work of one and the same spirit, and he distributes them to each of us, each one, just as he determines. So by the grace of God, you can speak in tongues. By the grace of God, you can interpret that tongue. Why would he give us a, a somebody speaking in tongue if there's no one there to interpret the tongue? So if someone's speaking in tongue and there's no one there to interpret the tongue, that tongue is invalid. Y'all don't want to talk to me. Mm, mm, mm. That tongue is invalid. God does not contradict himself when he's building something and he's growing something. Don't believe one person can possess the fivefold. That's a leadership gift. But inside of that fivefold, do they have the gift of wisdom? Mm. Y'all better talk to me in that evangelistic gift. Do they have the gift of knowledge? Hmm. Commitment to Christ first. All right, let, let me read some more of this lesson, guys. So I want you to get this lesson. All right. Um, I read that the spirit manifests himself and it knows that it, it calls it a male figure from the Bible. Um, but in God, there's neither male nor female. Just so you guys know, the spirit manifests himself. He reveals himself in each one of us. So the spirit of God will manifest himself in us and he reveals himself to us. And this is why Christ said, my sheep know my voice. If there's a spirit manifesting in you and you don't recognize the voice, you could be possessed. Yo, see, that's the part of the church no one wants to talk to. And you don't have to go to the Catholic church or the press. You can ask God for deliverance. What spirits can possess you? Alcoholism, <laughs> Dr narcotics. Oh, y'all want to talk to me? Lust, manipulation, lying, stealing. All of these are spirits that come through time. They don't change what they do. And even the evil spirits know who they are. Even the evil spirits know who God is. There's a story I love. 
is where these people are playing church. And they're casting out demons because they heard somebody else do it. They saying the right words because they heard somebody else do it. They ain't anointed. They ain't gifted. They ain't got the Holy Spirit. And then the enemy comes out. They, they, they run across a bigger spirit. They say, wait a minute. Christ I know. Paul I know. Who are you? And he might have said, Peter I know. Let's look that up. Hallelujah. Who are you? That's what the spirit asked. Because he didn't see any anointing. He didn't see Christ. Scripture says even the demons tremble. So if Christ, if the Holy Spirit is in you, when you walk in the house, atmospheres change. People start to run. Hallelujah. You can change things. That's why you got the power to cast out demons, not because of you, but because of who's in you, who you're operating under, the name, the calling. Hallelujah. Jesus. Y'all don't want to talk to me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus, I know. I'm looking up that scripture. Hallelujah. We're going to read that because it's imperative for today's message. We're talking about the different of gifts. Acts 19, 15. Acts 11 through 17. Acts 19, 11 through 17. All right. So I'm going to read that because I love the story. Um, now, God worked unusual miracles by the hand of Paul. Paul Paul used to be Saul, had his Damascus Road uh, experience. A lot of y'all had Damascus Road experience, gave his life to Christ. So that even handkerchiefs and aprons were bought from his body to the sick and to the disease left them and the evil spirits went out of them. Just because of the anointing was all over him, this is uh, his clothing would heal people. Just because the anointing, and this is what God wants in the body of Christ. He wants us to walk in our calling. So the anointing anointing which breaks the yoke can show up at church so the anointing can show up on your job so the anointing can show up at the afternoon service sometimes you got to walk in places where your flesh may be uncomfortable but god need the anointing to show up so you gotta go you gotta speak you gotta convict hallelujah because the anointing that's in you but when you determine not to go you break the anointing oh god you break the connection and you're being disobedient to God. <laughs> so now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were bought from his body to the sick and the diseases left them and the evil spirits went out of them. Then some of the um, uh, itinerant Jew exorcists took it upon themselves to call on the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits. So somebody, see, he would have said, said took it upon themselves. <laughs> Listen, let me get my uh, my amplified verse. Y'all better talk to me this morning. Hallelujah. This is Inspirational Sunday morning, first day of the week. My name is Harold Elam Jr. I'm the internet guy from Investment Group Partners. We're a private membership association built on the premises of God. That means we're faith-based. Based on the, in the state of Nevada, we've been in business since 2020. Uh, we've been incorporated since 2021, and we're a perpetual association. How did we get that? I'm not even sure. But once we finish, it says perpetual. Perpetual means ongoing. They can't stop us. They've already passed the law for us. It, and it was already on the books. God says that the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the just. Somebody set that up. I think the casinos in Vegas. I think the Mormons set that up and on the books. Well, now when you come to Nevada, I'm a perpetual. You're a perpetual. You're part of a perpetual association. We're ongoing. <laughs> Y'all don't even understand that. Acts 19, 11 through 7. We're going to read this out of the Amplified Version because I want y'all to hear this. We're still talking about today's lesson, guys. Let me give it back to you real quick so I don't want to lose anybody. Watch this. You should be. Oh, where is my page? Hallelujah. Well, we're going to Acts 19, 11 while that page load up. And I'm reading it from the um, Amplified Version. Amplified version says God was doing extraordinary and unusual miracles by the hands of Paul so that even handkerchiefs or face towels or aprons that had touched his skin were bought to the sick and their diseases left them and the evil spirits came out of them. Then some of the traveling Jewish exorcists, watch this, also attempted to call on the name of the Lord Jesus over those had over those who had evil spirits saying, I implore you and solemnly command you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. So they're doing what they're so they're doing it right. They've got the right 
um, ingredients, but they don't have the authority to use the ingredients. My son used to drive. He could drive really good, knew all the turn signals and everything, but didn't have the driver's license, which means he didn't have the authority. When he got caught, we got in trouble because we knew he was driving, but he didn't have the authority to drive. Now they gave us a break. God gave us mercy and grace. Hallelujah. And they called us and we had to come get him. But it's the same way. Some of y'all driving, riding dirty. You got your driver's license, you got your car, you're making your car pay, but you ain't got no insurance. See, so you don't have the authority to have that car on the road. Y'all don't want to talk to me. So these people didn't have the authority. Watch this. Seven sons of one named Skeva, S-C-E-V-A, a Jewish chief priest, was doing this. What was he doing? He was, he was saying he was attempting to call on the name of the Lord, even though he didn't believe. Jesus, over those who had evil spirits, he wanted to do what he seen Paul doing. I implore you and solemnly command you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. Seven sons, one named Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, was doing this. But the evil spirit retorted. <laughs> Hallelujah! Hey, look, they even say, I know and recognize and acknowledge Jesus. Oh, this is the spirit. It says, I know and recognize and acknowledge Jesus. And I know about Paul. But as for you, who are you? Mm. Now you want to know the importance of spiritual gifts? Now you want to know the importance? Because the spirit, the evil spirit said, who are you? Then the man in whom was the evil spirit leaped on them and subdued all of them and overpowered them so that they ran out of the house in terror, stripped, naked and wounded. And this is what's happening inside of the local churches. This is what's happening within the body of Christ because you're not in your position of purpose because you have not received the Holy Spirit because you're not operating in the gift that God has given you. So he know who you are and the community knows who you are and the church knows who you are and people and strangers, even the enemy knows who you are. Because if he doesn't know who you are and you start you start uh, perpetrating a fraud. And you're saying, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm doing this. But no, the enemy going to come out and say, nope, you're not authorized. Who are you? And they're going to overpower you. They're going to overpower you. Alcoholism, drunkenness, drugs, greed. These are spirits that travel through time. And they're doing the same thing they've always been doing, doubt. The enemy seeks to do one thing along with his enemies and his imps. He took a half of the heavens with him and they're operating under the same evil spirit kill steal destroy under these kill to kill steal and destroy are different bullet points kill then he got bullet points kill their desire kill their their faith kill uh, uh kill steal 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 their joy <laughs> y'all ain't hear me this morning glory be unto your name god mm -mm -mm. Heavenly Father, they're, they're, they're hearing me. They're listening, but are they hearing me, God, in the name of Jesus? Heavenly Father, thank you. Listen, guys, um, there are different kinds of gifts, and these gifts are, are operational within the body of Christ. These gifts have already been given out to many of us. But in order for those gifts to be properly operational, you have to know your gift. Now, I, I can't tell you your gift. God may reveal to me what it is, but it's up to you to make a relationship with Christ. It's up to you to make a relationship so God recognizes you for who you are. He can't see me if there's no Christ in me. Christ won't gift me the Holy Spirit if there's no room for him. Light and dark cannot live in the same place. So we got to clean up and clean out so we can make room. And once we make room, God places in our position of purpose. But we make with the cleansing time, the transformation time, the preparation time is sometimes uncomfortable. That's your position of purpose. I don't want to be here. That's your position of purpose. I don't like that person. That's your position of purpose. Why me? Why me? That's your position of purpose. It's the position, but the purpose outweighs the position. Stay right there. Because once you're in that position of purpose, regardless of what's going on, God's going to allow those gifts to operate and function because now you're connected. And once you're connected, it's ongoing. It's consistent. It's rhetorical. Hallelujah. It keeps going and 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 going. 
Who doesn't want to, to keep going and going and going like the Energizer Bunny? Glory be unto your name. But God said, I need you to maintain your position. And so when he connects you with another vision, you're still maintaining your position, but you're helping because of the gift that's in you, because of who you are. You're helping grow that body. Could be your local church. You're helping grow that body. Could be your family. Even people in your same household won't listen to you, but you got to keep going. If the world don't smile back at you, you got to keep smiling. If the wife don't go, but God told you to go, you got to keep moving. If the husband don't go because God told you to go, you got to keep going. Maintain your position and let God do the rest. Don't come up, but don't come up against the opposition all the time. Every fight, every battle ain't yours. Don't come up against it. Just maintain your position of purpose and then ask God, what would I do next? What would I say next? How would I move next? Where does that fall into place? Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Lean not to your own education. Lean not to your own talents. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he, he being God, will direct your path. But we're talking about maintaining your position of purpose in spite of the circumstances, the situation, the doubt and time is the negative people. The people, the places, the thing, in spite of the storm that's coming, in spite of the lives that's been lost, in spite of the, the money that you lost, in spite of, you need to maintain your position of purpose. Because when you do, God's going to look out for you. Psalms 1-1, and then we're going to leave, y'all. Hallelujah. We're going to be right on time this morning. We're going to be obedient. It's 930. We started at 830. Uh, moving forward, just so everybody know, moving forward, Inspirational Sunday morning is going to come on at 830. It's an 830 podcast, 830 on the West Coast, 1130 on the East Coast. Prayerfully, we can bless you before you go to church or after you came from church. If you don't have a church, hey, just join in right here. Don't worry about it. We ain't going to take up no offering. <laughs> Hallelujah. Psalms 1. One, we're going to read it from the uh, uh, Amplified Version, and I need you all to receive this in your spirit. So open up your minds, open up your hearts, and receive this. This is God talking to you through me, but I'm talking to you. You, 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 and you. Call your mama, call your daddy, your auntie, uncle, your sister, brother, call big mama, and then what? Tell them we're about to be blessed. Blessed, fortunate, prosperous, and favored by God is the man who does not. Let me go back and read that because I want to address the, the everybody in the room. Blessed, fortunate, prosperous, favored by God is the is the person. Who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, following their advice and example. So you want to be blessed. You want to be fortunate. You want to be prosperous. You want to be favored by God. Don't walk in the counsel of the wicked. Don't follow their advice and their example. Don't stand in the path of sinners. Don't sit down to rest in the seat of the scoffers. Your delight as a child of God, your delight is in the law of the Lord. And you're, you're supposed to meditate on his precepts, his teaching. You're supposed to habitually meditate day and night. And you will be like a tree. Here you are in your position of purpose. You'll be like a tree planted and fed by the streams of water. You're connected because you're in your position of purpose. You're growing because you're in your position of purpose. You're being fed because you're in your position of purpose. You're being blessed, fortunate, prosperous, favored by God because you're not walking with the counsel of the wicked. You're, and you're like a tree which yields its fruit in season. Its leaf does not wither. And whatever you do will prosper and come to maturity. Whatever you do will prosper and come to maturity, but you got to maintain your position of purpose. That's why God's telling you, see, I need y'all to operate. And he's not talking to just you as an individual. He's talking to us collectively. This is the reason why we're together. This is the reason why investment group partners exist. This is the reason why community investment club exists because we're doing it together. And because we're doing it together, we're all being blessed together. Last, last week, last month, if you didn't know, monthly membership rewards programs. Here's God blessing. $450,000 went out. On a month. Up a hundred thousand from last month. That's God being blessed. Excuse me, that he is being blessed because people are giving him joy. God is blessed when we bless him. But that's God blessing us through the ministry in which we have. In order for us to continue to do what we do, we all gotta be on one accord. We've got to be thinking the same. It has nothing to do with anything else but first our thought pattern and us as individuals maintaining our positions of purpose. My name is Harold Dillon Jr. I'm the Internet Guy. Thank you. Be blessed and happy Inspirational Sunday. Good morning.